Suppose we are looking at the numbers that I had in my previous video applied to 2012 and that is when the price is one was one dollar per cup 10 million cups of coffee was demanded when the price was two dollars per cup 8 million cups of coffee was demanded and so on now in 2013 what we find is though the price has stayed the same now people demand only 5 million cups of coffee instead of 10 million cups of coffee in 2012 when the price is two dollars per cup consumers demand 4 million cups of coffee instead of 8 million cups of coffee that we had in 2012 and the same phenomena we observe at other prices and what we find is people are now buying fewer cups of coffee at every given price <clears throat> so now we have this information about 2013 demand in 2013 we also have information about demand for coffee in 2012 and what we find is at each given price people are buying fewer cups of coffee now let us show all this this diagram shows us the following this blue demand curve was the demand curve say in 2012 and now something happened and people are buying fewer cups of coffee and so this red line indicates demand for coffee in 2013 and what is happening is the following at each given price people now demand less coffee or in other words <coughs> or in other words the demand curve for coffee has shifted to the left and this phenomena is called leftward shift of the demand curve now what is what does leftward shift of the demand curve indicate it indicates that the consumer buys fewer cups of coffee at each given price when the demand curve shifts to the left this is also referred to as let me write here on top decrease in demand what is decrease in demand it is that each given price consumers demand less of this product than what they did previously decrease in demand so the point to remember here is the curve demand curve could shift and this example shows a leftward shift of the demand curve and what this means is decrease in demand and what is decrease in demand consumers want to buy less at each given price now think about this for a moment why would this happen now in order to understand why would this happen we need to go back to the equation where we know quantity demanded of coffee is the dependent or exogenous variable and price of sugar tea price of tea income and taste and preferences are all independent or exogenous variables now how did we derive the law of demand we invoked citrus parables and by doing so we assume all these other variables stay constant because of citrus parables and because of that we were able to look at the impact of price per cup of coffee on demand for coffee so the demand curve depends or the location of the demand curve depends on the values of price of sugar tea income and taste and preference which we know are being held constant but if any of these change what we have is a shift 
of the demand curve and the demand curve if it shifts to the left indicates a decrease in demand but the same same set of arguments if the demand curve shifts to the right something i haven't shown in terms of a diagram that would indicate an increase in demand so a rightward shift implies an increase in demand a leftward shift implies a decrease in demand now there are some reasons for decrease in demand why would i buy fewer cups of coffee or why would you buy fewer cups of coffee at each given price one of the reasons could be if you like sweet coffee and the price of sugar increases for you the cost of coffee is the cost of black unsweet coffee plus the price of sugar so when price of sugar goes up the cost of consuming coffee for you has gone up and because of that we'll start to buy fewer cups of coffee so this could be one of the reasons another reason or before we get into that now so when price of sugar increases demand for coffee goes down or price of sugar falls demand for coffee goes up now when you find this kind of a phenomena the two goods are called complements note the spelling of complements and what do we mean by complements when two or more goods have to be taken together for you sugar and coffee unsweet coffee have to be taken together if this happens these two goods are called complements look at another example when you go to mcdonald you buy a sandwich along with that you would like to have fries so for you fries and sandwich become complements another example and this is the case of two goods being perfect complements is whenever we buy items which are show sold in pairs they are referred to as perfect complements for example we cannot buy a right shoe independently of the left shoe we have to buy both of them together example of perfect complements another example could be whenever we buy socks we buy them in pairs again example of perfect complements so one of the reasons as to why there may be a decrease in demand when there's an increase in price of a complement in our example of coffee it is the price of sugar and if price of sugar increases there is a decrease in demand for coffee now look at another factor which impacts demand for coffee and that is price of tea when would i start buying fewer cups of coffee if tea becomes relatively less expensive relative to coffee so if price of tea decreases tea has become relatively less expensive and so i start buying more tea and less coffee another reason for decrease in demand so when you look at goods like tea and coffee and when tea becomes less expensive i buy more tea another example of this could be suppose we are looking at demand for pepsi and there's another product called coke and the coke becomes relatively cheaper for example you buy pepsi for $1 just as an example and you can buy coke which is a similar product for 20 cents which one will you buy you'll start buying coke or you start replacing your demand for pepsi by coke if this happens the two goods are called substitutes what do we mean by substitutes two or more goods are substitutes if we could have one in place of another i could have tea in place of coffee coffee in place of tea so in case of substitutes if the price of a substitute falls we tend to buy more of the substitute rather than the original one in case and so in case when price of tea falls we are likely to buy fewer cups of coffee another reason for buying less coffee is when you have less money in your pocket 
or in other words your income falls and that makes sense if you have less money you are going to buy less of everything and if this happens coffee is will be referred to as a normal good why a normal good because we would expect this to happen under normal circumstances when you have less money in your pocket you'll buy less of everything including coffee and so this could be another reason for decrease in demand now another interesting thing we find found in economics is sometimes when people become richer they tend to demand less of items that they would buy when they were poorer or they had lower income so when people's income rises or people become richer sometimes we find they start considering the goods that they were having earlier as cheap or inferior and they start to buy less of that good and if you observe this kind of a phenomena coffee would be called an inferior good now one thing you must remember is the following in economics what we are trying to do is we look at the real world and try to understand it as it exists so what is a normal good what is an inferior good entirely depends on what the consumer tells us or how the consumer behaves similarly what is a complement what is a substitute again depends on the psychology of the consumer for example for me pepsi and coke are substitutes but if i like to mix my drinks then they become complements so what is a complement what is a substitute what is a normal good what is an inferior good all depends on the psychology of the consumer and that's what we try to understand <clears throat> so in case of a normal good a decrease in income would cause a decrease in demand in in case coffee happens to be an inferior good an increase in income would lead to a decrease in demand for coffee another factor which could cause a decrease in demand is taste and preferences suppose i start liking coffee less and less then i would demand less coffee another possibility is the doctors tell us coffee drinking is bad for health and so we start drinking fewer cups of coffee so here is a list of different variables which could cause a decrease in demand for coffee and this would be indicated by a leftward shift of the demand curve for a rightward shift of the demand curve which represents an increase in demand how would we explain that it will be exactly the opposite of the variables that i have listed here exactly the opposite now here are some definitions <coughs> that i have explained in the previous slide and this is something you should know complements a term that we have learned not the spelling when two or more goods are consumed together they are considered to be complements for example coffee and sugar or coffee and creamer fries and sandwich and so on substitutes when we when we can have one good in place of another like if i could have tea in place of coffee or coffee in place of tea or i could have coke in place of pepsi or pepsi in place of coke substitutes inferior good when changes in income cause changes in demand for the good in an opposite direction for example when my income rises i buy less of coffee moving in opposite direction and so now coffee becomes an inferior good what about normal good when changes in income cause changes in demand in the same direction for example if income <coughs> falls i demand fewer cups of coffee and when income rises i demand more cups of coffee or we are moving in the same direction and in this case coffee will be considered a normal good this completes our analysis of the demand side thank you for your time